Yeah, welcome back here to the cage at Pioneer Junior Senior High School as we're getting set to go with the JV matchup between the Panthers and the visiting Tri-County Cavaliers. Glad you could join us this morning. And for those of you who were uh, either at LaVille last night or watched on IHSA TV, that was a rough one. Pioneer Panthers football season ended at LaVille in the 2A sectional 34 championship game. And it was a rough one, 41-0 that was the final score. The LaVille Lancers, uh, they just came out and put a hurting to the Panthers last night in pretty much all phases of the game. And congratulations to LaVille. They'll be heading over to Andrean uh, next Friday to take on the 59ers for a chance to go play for a semi-state. And, you know, it's a, a little bit of a... Um, opening there in the 2A uh, level for uh, whoever's left because the Fort Wayne Lures uh, Knights, I believe, were knocked off by Eastside last night. So we're getting ready here. We're going to get the starting lineups. We're going to start with the visitors from Tri-County. Welcome, everybody, to Pioneer Junior Senior High School. Today's JV contest. Starting lineups for Tri County. Number 10, Lizzie Bellard. Number 24, Jasmine Providence. Number 30, Alyssa Tolman. Number 32, Ariana Domingo. And 44, Ella Cole. Yeah. Pioneer fans, on your feet for the JV varsity starting lineup. <laughs> Number 13, Manish Hoppinson. Yeah. Number 20, Kirsten Nyes. Yeah. Number 23, Julia McGrew. Number 24, Al Murray. Yeah. Number 25, Holy Lucas. Yeah. All right, number 13, Manoj Motan from France. He's actually our uh, foreign exchange student, so she is with uh with us this year so we're glad to have her and she is the one of the starters here for the jv team and the 2021-2022 girls basketball season just about ready to go here for the pioneer panthers it's going to be nice and Baller tipping for Tri County and Nice tips it back and McGrew and we are underway. And uh, the Panthers get on the board first. Julia McGrew, Juju McGrew. Shout out to Rob McGrew watching. I think he said he was in Tennessee.
Turnover. The Panthers get the ball back here. 5.59 to go in the first quarter. And there is a foul. It's going to send McGrew to the line. Shooting two for the Panthers. And the bank's open on a Saturday morning for McGrew. Puts it in. She has three. And that's two for two from the free throw line for McGrew. She's got all four of the Panthers point. Pioneer leads Tri-County 4-0. Lucas with the steal, and she's going to be fouled. Chloe Lucas at the line, shooting two for the Panthers. Bounces off the back iron, no good for the first. Second free throw coming up here for the freshman Lucas off the back iron. No good. Trey County comes away with the rebound. And the jump ball. Possession arrow to Tri-County. And off of the glass and good. Tri-County gets on the scoreboard. That's Dominguez with the three. Lucas three-pointer top of the key just off the mark rebound to the Cavaliers Come back the other way baller holds it up He's gonna set up the offense here for the Cavaliers three-pointer right wing and that one is long by Dominguez and Shimota or that's uh, sorry uh, Kai Murray and She's gonna get called for a travel Good defense there by the Panthers. Dominguez, 15-footer, no good. Offensive glass, no good. And Kirsten Nice comes away with the board for the Panthers. Lucas pushes it up the floor. Left hand, no good, but the foul coming on the Cavaliers will send Chloe Lucas to the line, shooting two.
they have it 5-4, I believe. It's uh, the scoreboard on the is wrong. Well, now it's 11-4. Now it's 6-4. So Panthers lead 6-4 as Lucas hits both free throws. Lucas with the steal and the layup. So Lucas and McGrew both have four, and the Panthers lead 8-3. Mingas three-pointer, and Tri-County is going to be out of bounds. Be Panthers ball. And Lucas with the bucket. So six in a row by Chloe Lucas, and the Panthers lead 10-3. Almost another steal there by Lucas, knocked out of bounds. It's going to remain Cavalier ball. Murray checks in for Lucas. Kinsey Hathaway checked in there. I missed that. Sorry. Coming in for Tri-County, number 42, Cammie Wilkerson. Going to give Dominguez a break. 2.32 to go here in the first quarter, just getting underway in the JV contest here with the Panthers and the Tri-County Cavaliers. That shot might have been tipped. Offensive glass, no good. And Nice comes away with the rebound. She's got three. Cavaliers surrounding her in the jump ball and possession will be to the Panthers. Oh, nice pass. Shimotan into McGrew for two. The assist, Manoj Motan. Back the other way, the Cavaliers. Pioneer leading 12-3 here in the first. That's going to be a travel called on Tri-County. McGrew and Chloe Lucas both with six. We've got a timeout called here by Tri-County. We'll take a break as well. Be back here. No, it's just a 30. We'll keep it here. So we are in the first quarter with the Tri-County Cavaliers. And the Pioneer Panthers checking in at the break is going to be number 30, Allison Martinez Domingo, checking in for the Panthers. Gotta go, go. Good first quarter here for the Panthers, getting things started 12-3. As we said, McGrew with six and Chloe Lucas with six. Schmotan with Wilkerson Gardner. Wilkerson knocks it out and it'll stay Panthers ball. And that one's going to be tipped out off of the Cavaliers. Good defense there by Culp. Jasmine Culp, a 5-2 junior, checked into the game. Number 15 for the Cavaliers. Almost a steal. They're able to keep possession. Murray... Gets it in, takes a 15-footer, the shot's off the side of the glass, and then Murray is going to get called for the foul on the loose ball. First team foul 
Chloe Lucas getting ready to check back in for the Panthers. Also checking into the game is number two, Jalen Lehman, Shimotan, and Murray take a break for Pioneer. And it's going to be a foul there on, I believe, Kirsten Nyes. Going to pick up the first or the team's second. Cavaliers, and that's going to go out of bounds on the inbounds attempt. So it'll be white ball, baseline right. Forty seconds still to go here in the first. Lucas pass denies almost a steal, and that's going to be a travel called on Lehman. And Lucas gets in the passing lane, able to come away with the ball. Fifteen footer off the back glass for Lehman. Good offensive rebound at that time by Domingo. Clock running down here in the quarter. Lucas shot no good at the end of one. Pioneer leads Tri County. 12-3 here on RTC TV4. We'll take a break and come back with second quarter action here from the cage at Pioneer High School. And All right, welcome back here to the cage at Pioneer High School. After one, the Panthers lead Tri-County 12-3 here on RTC TV4. JV contest getting set to go. Second quarter action. All 12 of the Panthers' points came from two girls, Juju McGrew with six and Chloe Lucas with six as well for the Panthers. Second quarter gets started. It's going to be Tri-County ball. Team footer off the back iron for Wilkerson. Offensive glass and the second chance put back. Ella Culp puts it in. And the Cavaliers now have five. Lucas long three attempt off of the back iron. And the rebound goes to Baylor for the Cavaliers. Double dribble called on the Cavaliers. I want to give Aiden a shout out. He's uh, got up early here on a Saturday morning coming in and, and doing the filming for us. One of the Pioneer High School TV and radio class members. First year class here at Pioneer. We are glad that they have it. Glad for uh, the Shimotan puts it in for two. Mano Shimotan. I'll have to uh, help Dennis out with that name. Well, Dennis Walker doing the PA announcing for both football and basketball this year. Which is rough for us because he helped us out quite a bit last year. And uh, so they, they took him away from us, but uh, that's okay. He's doing a fine job. Checking in for Tri-County, number 22, Lisa Road. First time in the game for her, I believe. Nice pass. Lucas into McGrew for two. Good assist that time from Chloe Lucas to McGrew. McGrew now with eight. Lead is 16-5. 
A good defense by McGrew. Lucas comes away with the steal. Two on one, fast break. Murray off the iron, and they're going to call Chloe Lucas with the personal on the loose ball. I believe that's her first team's third. Just inside the three-point line, that shot is off for Tallman. Offensive glass, no good, and Murray comes away with it. She's got Lucas running free, and Lucas hits the iron. Rebound basket, I believe that was Murray coming in and getting the offensive glass. We're going to give her the bucket. Panthers now lead 18-5. Nice push ahead, and McGrew puts it in for two more. Juju McGrew having a whale of a first half here for the Panthers. She is now in double figures with 10 points. Dominguez, long three, left wing, no good. McGrew offensive, or gets the glass. Throws it away. Dominguez shot off the mark. Offensive glass for the Cavaliers. Tallman hit the ground pretty hard there, but she gets back up. Three-pointer, and that is good for number... Can't see her number. That was baller with the three. Number 10. So a foul on number 30, Tallman. That's her third, team's fourth. That puts Chloe Lucas at the line, shooting two for the Panthers. Lucas off of the back iron. We got a host, 40-15-42. And coming in is Hathaway, Culp, Wilkerson, and number 40 is, she wrote that in here, hold on. And the second free throw is good for Lucas. Got too many things going on here. Tri-County number 40, Jasmine Province. Well, no, that's number 24. So I don't know who 40 is on the JV. She's wrote in on the varsity as number 40. I thought maybe that was who that was, but I do not know who number 40 is. I apologize. Not listed here on the junior varsity roster. I can only give you what's uh, in front of me. I apologize for that. 21-8 uh, here in favor of the Panthers. Good defense out top by Chloe Lucas. And uh, she picks off the pass. One-on-one -on -one with Culp. Pulls up, 15-footer, no good. Loose ball. And they're going to say that was off of Pioneer. It'll be Tri-County ball. 3.14 to go here in the second quarter. Panthers lead 21-8. JV contest. And it's going to be a travel called on Tri-County. Gives the ball back over. Coming back into the game, number two, Jalen Lehman. Going to give Chloe Lucas a break. Good thought there. She was trying to find Nyes. But uh, took an extra step there. Turn over for the Panthers. Right 
And it's going to be a foul coming up on the Panthers. They're going to call it on Kenzie Hathaway, her first, the team's fourth. Tri-County will have it out of bounds, baseline right under their bucket. Well, nice inbounds pass. Uh, Wilkerson couldn't handle it. She was wide open under the basket. Three-pointer right wing, no good that time for Culp. And Murray able to get the rebound, coming back. Hathaway, and she loses it out of bounds, so it'll be Tri-County ball. So Pioneer, the last of our teams that we covered to open their season here for girls basketball. We had four games with five of our teams playing on the air on Thursday night. If you didn't catch that, Rochester hosted North Judson. Both varsity and JV got the win there. A a lot of uh, Hoosier North Conference teams that we cover were in action as well. Caston defeated Argus, two of our teams playing up there. Culver Community was on the road, not very far away though. They were at Culver Academy and they lost in their opener. And Tippecanoe Valley was at home and they lost to the Bremen Lions. That shot was off by Baylor, and a loose ball, and it's going to be a jump, and it will remain Tri-County ball. Lucas knocks it out of bounds, stays Tri-County ball. And looks like Chloe Lucas might have got a piece of that one. Good defense. Into Hathaway. Hathaway with two Cavaliers on her. And a jump ball will stay Pioneer ball. Minute 21 left here in the first half. Panthers 21, Tri-County 8. Nice pass, Nyes into Lucas. Offensive rebound, Hathaway, and she's going to get tied up again, and this time it will be Tri-County ball on the jump. And good defense there by Kinsey Hathaway, but they're going to call Lucas, I believe, for the travel. And coming back into the game is number 30, Allison Martinez-Domingo. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Three-pointer, and I think that Nyes might have got a piece of that. And another tie-up, Hathaway... Nice job there, and this time it will go to the Panthers. Lucas uh, loses her footing, and they're going to call Domingo on a travel. Gives the ball back over to the Cavaliers with 39 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Murray getting ready to check back in for Pioneer. Culp gets around McGrew. Baseline jumper no good. Offensive glass, and they're going to count it. Good job there on the glass. Foul on McGrew, and Culp will be going to the free throw line for the and one attempt. Yeah. 
Off on that, but the rebound, Baylor comes up with the offensive glass for the Cavaliers. And good defense there. McGrew and Nyes trap Baylor on the baseline, and she steps on the line. Gives the ball back over to the Panthers with 13. Ten seconds left now. And that will do it for the first half. At the half, Tri-County... 10, Pioneer 21. Here in the JV contest, we'll take a break and come back with halftime stats. A few of them. I don't have a bunch of halftime stats for the JV, but uh, we will be back in a moment. Thanks for tuning in to RTC TV4's coverage of Pioneer Panthers basketball here this morning from the cage at Pioneer Junior, senior high school will be back in a moment. Point of emphasis, I'm sure, coming up in practice for Coach Burns. Second half underway. It's going to be the Cavaliers' ball to start things off. Culp inside. That's going to be blocked, but they're going to call a foul on, I believe, Kirsten Nyes. No, they're going to call Shimotan from the back. So that'll send Ella Culp to the line. Leading scorer in the first half for Tri-County, shooting two. And Culp off the back iron on the first. And adjusted a little too much off the front iron on the second. Shmotan with the rebound. Brings it down the floor. Hits a cutting Lucas back up top. And the 18-footer, no good for Murray. Rebound to the Cavaliers. Jump ball is going to be Pioneer ball on the alternating possession. Lucas loses her footing, goes down, able to get back up. And then she's going to get called for a travel. A little out of control there for the freshman. Lucas pokes that away, and that's going to be last touch by the Cavaliers. Turnover Tri-County. Pioneer gets the ball back. Lucas brings it across the timeline. Just inside the three-point line for Murray. Shot short. Coming back the other way. Left-hand layup is good for Culp. Her first two points of the game. <coughs> Brings the Panthers lead to nine. Oh, nice crossover. Shimotan past McGrew. Can't handle it. She tries to get it back over to Shimotan. She does. And the Panthers reset. And there's a foul. Lucas going to the line. She's going to get hit by number 40. Lucas to the line for two. I was hoping maybe they would say her name, but they didn't. Dennis probably doesn't have the, no, the name to go with that either. Chloe Lucas at the line shooting two, and the first one is good. Back to a 10-point advantage. Lucas has eight. Wilkerson, I think, yeah, checks into the game, number 42. 
Second free throw is good as well for Lucas. She's got nine. And the lead back up to 11 for the Panthers. And Lucas with the steal. One on one. And she tried to do a shot fake, but didn't get her feet underneath her and get called, gets called for a travel and a turnover. A long three-point attempt by Dominguez. Another offensive glass. Tara, you're you're right there. They gotta eliminate those offensive rebounds. And the Panthers want a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout by Coach Burns, so we'll keep it here with you. Pioneer leads 23-12. Varsity girls uh, going in to get ready in the locker room for their match or game coming up here shortly after the conclusion of this one. Really looking forward to, uh, to seeing this varsity team and, and what they can do this year, of course, coming off of the 1A state championship run they had last year and that that barely I mean the year before they were 1A runner-up so back-to-back -back appearances in the state championship game and that success has moved them up into 2A this year we'll talk about that as well they're going to be in a sectional with Carroll and Rochester and Lewis Cass some really really tough 2A teams and so if they're wanting to uh Get a third straight sectional. It's going to be a little tougher this year. We'll talk with Val when he gets here on that and much more. Schmotan runner pass over to McGrew. Lucas Bank is open for Chloe Lucas. Lucas with 11. She joins McGrew in double figures. Pass going to be out of bounds. Turnover, Tri-County. 4.02 to go here in the third quarter of the JV contest. Lucas, runner. It's going to be a foul on number 40 of Tri-County. And again, Chloe Lucas at the line, shooting two free throws. She made both of them the last trip. And I jinxed her. Five of seven from the free throw line for the freshman Chloe Lucas. And off on both. I double jinxed her. 15-footer from the elbow, no good. And a quick foul called on Pioneer. And they're going to call Kirsten Nyes with the foul. That'll be her second, I believe. Yep. Second of the half for Pioneer. And the Cavaliers lose it out of bounds. Ball back over to the Panthers. Fifteen footer in the paint, no good. Tri County coming back the other way. Quickly down the floor is Culp. And she's aggressive to the basket. She's gonna get rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. They're gonna call the foul on Shimotan. So that will put Jasmine Culp at the free throw line, shooting two for the Cavaliers. Off the back iron on the first. And misses on the second. 
But we have a lane violation called on Pioneer, so she's going to get a third opportunity. Speaking of Joe Walker, it's nice to see her here this morning. Off the glass, and that's going to go off a nice, so it will be Tri-County ball 0 for 3 from the free throw line, but they're going to get another chance here with the possession. Baylor to inbounds here on the baseline, left of the side. And yeah, good job there with the steal is Murray. Good defense there by Murray. And a turnover for the Panthers. Oh, good defense by Shimotan. They're going to say it was a kick, though. So it'll be Tri-County's ball. Getting ready to check in Kinsey Hathaway. And she's going to give him a no break. Double teamed. And they're going to, Nice is going to come up with it. Lucas loses it. And then uh, Tri-County loses it back. So series of turnovers there, and it's going to end up being Pioneer Ball here baseline right. A turnover coming down the other way off the mark, Wilkerson, but she gets the offensive glass. Lucas able to get the steal. Lucas kicks it over to McGrew, and McGrew hits it off of Wilkerson, so it will remain Pioneer ball. And Tri-County is going to call a timeout. It will be a full timeout, so we'll take a break with them and be back here with more from Pioneer High School here on RTC. Back here at Pioneer High School out of the Cavaliers timeout. Pioneer leads 25-12 here in the third quarter. One bad thing about using the clock is that when they go to timeouts, they do go to a timer on the scoreboard. So that throws me off. 2.23 to go here in the third quarter exact. It's going to be Pioneer Ball, baseline right, coming out of the timeout. Lucas goes cross court, tries to get it into Nyes. And a tie up with Hathaway and Wilkerson. Jump ball will go to Tri County. Lucas knocks that one away. Out of bounds, though. It'll be Tri County ball. Cavaliers will take it on the far sideline. Baller to inbound. Good defense on Culp that time by Lucas. Three-pointer by Wilkerson, hard off the glass. Hathaway gets the rebound. And back come the Panthers. Nice pass into McGrew, 4-2. Good pass from Lucas to McGrew. McGrew now has 12. McGrew and Chloe Lucas in double figures each for the Panthers. 
Three-pointer off of the back iron. That was a good shot there by Colt, just off a little. Nice, had an open look there, doesn't take it. Kicks it over to Lucas. Lucas wheels back into the paint. Another nice pass into McGrew, shot off the mark. And the rebound to Wilkerson. Pass off of one of the Tri-County players. McGrew comes up with the loose ball. Kicks it across. Murray brings it across the timeline. Drive into the paint. Off the mark. Lucas gets the offensive glass on the loose ball and puts it in for two. Chloe Lucas with 13 for the Panthers. Good defense by McGrew, able to come away with the loose ball, and then she throws it off of the leg of Wilkerson. Good play. Dominguez and Rode come back in for Tri-County. Lehman and Martinez Domingo come in for the Panthers. And the tie-up will go to the Panthers. Two seconds left here in the third quarter. Domingo gets it in to Murray. Murray and a shot off of the mark at the end of three. The Panthers lead 29-12 over the Tri-County Cavaliers. We'll take a break and come back with the fourth quarter here of the JV matchup in just well, a moment. Welcome back here, Pioneer High School, as we get set to start the fourth quarter of the JV contest. Panthers have a 17-point lead over Tri-County. It's going to be Tri-County ball here coming out of the quarter break. If they break their huddle. <laughs> A little late in breaking the huddle for the Cavaliers. Almost a steal. Shot off the mark. Lehman comes away with the rebound. Nyes on the left wing, kicks it up top to Murray. And it's going to be travel on Lehman, turnover Pioneer. Another offensive rebound, that one... By Culp, not able to put it in. Murray comes away with it. Murray, one-on-one -on -one versus Dominguez. Offensive rebound by Domingo. And the shot by Nyes is off the mark. Back the other way comes Rode. Just inside the three-point line. That was tipped at time by Murray. Knocked out of bounds that time by Baylor. It's going to be Pioneer Ball. Coming in is going to be Cami Wilkerson. She will check in for Lisa Rode. Hathaway kicks it. Murray tries to drive baseline on Culp. Culp's going to get called for the personal. Her first, the team's third, so no free throws for Pioneer. Murray inbounds to Nyes, kicks it up to Lehman over to Hathaway. 
Knocked out of bounds that time to defense by Wilkerson. Hathaway gets around Wilkerson, picks up her dribble, and is called for the turnover on the travel. Good defense there by Domingo, and it's going to be a push in the back by the Cavaliers on the offensive glass. They're going to call that on Ella Culp. Her first, team's fourth. And they're going to call the foul on Ariana Dominguez. Her first, team's fifth. And a good job stepping in the passing lane. Wilkerson shot no good. Rebound, though. Another offensive glass for Tri-County. They're going to call it. Foul on Kinsey Hathaway, her second, team's fourth. The Tri-County ball baseline left. And the three-pointer is good by Dominguez, her second of the game. She has six. That cuts the Pioneer lead to 14, 450 to go here in the ball game. Murray shot off the mark, fought, loose ball, and it's going to be Tri-County on the alternating possession. Nice inbounds, and McGrew puts it in for two. Julia McGrew with 14 now for the Panthers. Pioneers lead back up to 16. Can be tipped out off of the Panthers. Will remain Tri-County ball. Murray comes up with the steal, and from behind, Culp knocks it out. Will remain Pioneer's ball. Lucas to inbounds, gets it into McGrew, up to Shimotan. Murray gets into the paint, into McGrew, off the mark. And a foul from behind on number 40 of the Cavaliers. That is her fourth, team's six. So the Panthers will be in the bonus after the next Tri-County foul. Another nice pass in. That one's blocked. Offensive glass to Nyes. Can't get it to go. Shimotan gets the loose ball off the front iron. No good. Rebound, and that's going to be a jump ball. It will be Panthers on the jump. No? Oh. Well, I had that wrong. I apologize. Try County on the jump. Panthers will get it the next time.
Three-pointer short, and that should be a, yep, a travel there. Road took an extra step on the offensive glass, but another offensive re rebound by Tri-County. Nice pass, Shimotan into McGrew. Another assist for Mano Shimotan, and McGrew puts it in. She has 14, I believe. 16, actually, for McGrew. Murray over to Lucas, and she's going to get called for the walk. Looked pretty good. I don't know. He was on the other side there, though, so he could see her feet. Definitely had a better angle in that one than I did. Yeah, double team and Nyes knocks it away from behind. Good defense there by Nyes. And Lucas going to get called for a carry. Hathaway, Lehman, and Domingo going to check in. Have a Tri-County timeout. It is a full timeout. We'll take a break with them. Be back here with more from Pioneer High School. 2.33 to go here in the fourth quarter of the JV contest. The Pioneer Panthers lead the Tri-County Cavaliers 33-15. Julia McGrew having a whale of an afternoon here. She has 16 for the Panthers. 13 for freshman Chloe Lucas as well. 29 of the Panthers, 33 points from McGrew and Lucas. Murray kicks it across to Nyes. Back up to Murray. <laughs> Layman switches her pivot feet. Turnover for the Panthers. 2.06 to go here in the ballgame. Out of bounds off of Pioneer. The Cavaliers ball baseline left. Under two to go here in the fourth quarter of the JV game. Good defense by the Panthers. And there's going to be a foul called. They're going to call Murray on the foul, her second, team's fifth. Checking back into the game is Ariana Dominguez. Cammie Wilkerson going to take a break. Good defense by Murray, knocks it away, and a jump ball. This one should be Pioneers. And a travel call, turnover, ball back over to Tri-County. A travel called on Baylor. Murray can't get it to go. Offensive glass, Hathaway kicks it over to Nyes, 
and she's going to be fouled. That's going to be Dominguez. Shooting foul. Kirsten Nyes at the line, shooting two, minute one to go. And off the mark, checking in is 42 Wilkerson and 22 Lisa Road. Dominguez and Culp are going to take a break. Hathaway off of the miss gets the offensive glass for the Panthers. Shot off, rebound to the Cavaliers. Steal by Lehman. Shot off, hard off the glass. Lehman, though, gets the loose ball, and Lehman puts it in. Lehman gets her first two of the ball game. 20 point lead with under 5 4. Murray layup, no good. And that's going to do it. Final here in the JV matchup. The Pioneer Panthers win the 35-15 over Tri-County. So the Panthers pick up the win, 35-15. And here comes the varsity. Number 
All right, there are your starters. Coach Brooke going with Brooke Weisenberger, Steffel Adinger, and Kripe. For Coach, I didn't even look up her name, Missy Tyler. It's going to be Warren, Zars, Stearns, Arvin, and Whitmire. It's going to be Weisenberger going up against Stearns. Is that 32 or 33? 30, 33. So that's actually Arvin going for the tip. And we are underway, and the Lady Cavs have the ball to start off the ball game. Nice job by Ar Arvin on finishing on the block. Brooke from the wing, shot off the mark, and rebound fought for, and it's going to be off of Weisenberger, and it will be Tri-County ball. Who got that first bucket there, Val? That will be Arvin off an assist by Stearns. Early 2-0 lead here for the Cavaliers, just getting underway, varsity contest. Pioneer in a man. And there's Kripe with the steal. Goes around the ref. Left hand layup for the senior. Puts in the first bucket of the year for the Panthers. There is your trivia question for 2021 Pioneer Ball. There's a steal. Brook and the left hand layup. Ashlyn Brook and the foul. She's going to get an opportunity for an and one. Foul is on Zars, her first team's first. And Brooke at the line. Yeah, I think Zars, he would have been better off just to let Ashlyn alone on that one. Off the mark, though. Kripe gets the offensive glass, can't put it in. Rebound to Arvin. Zarsi, was I saying that wrong? I think you were. Okay. I, no, just tell me. <laughs> that's the PA announcer said Zarsi. Kripe knocks it away. Brooke comes up with the ball, passes it ahead. Kripe, and she puts it in for two. Kripe with four, and the lead is 6-2 in favor of the Panthers. Shot off the mark. Rebound. Adinger. Brooke pushes it up. Kripe, and she puts in two more. She has six quickly out of the gate here for the Panthers. Nice outlet pass by Adinger, and that's another thing that Coach Brooke talks about uh, teaching them, teaching the bigs those outlet passes. Yep. Good cut there. Can't put the bucket in. Rebound, and Brooke comes away with it. Weisenberger running down the floor. Brooke finds her, and she puts it in. Weisenberger gets on the scoreboard, and we got a Tri-County timeout. 10-2 quickly out of the gate. 30-second timeout here for Tri-County. We'll keep it here. Boy, the this is just an ideal start. Well, after the first possession, this has just been an ideal start for Pioneer. I mean, first of all, their defense is causing havoc. You know, Tri-County ran their set that first play, but they haven't really been able to run their offense since. And then um, second thing is uh, looking to run. Because sometimes the first game of the season, first couple games of the season, you look to run, and you're looking to push the tempo, and oftentimes the ball is just flying all over the place and winds up in the stands a few times. But this is transition basketball and following their rules, but playing fast without playing out of control. And that's a, that's a really good sign. Well, and, and Pioneer has some experience right. with, with this pace. I mean, right. that's the way right. they play. We talk about the rules. Yeah. You know, Coach Brooks' rules. I mean, it's not a lot of set plays. It's just follow the rules. And now it looks like Pioneer in a little bit of a zone here. Good, good defense, defense by, yeah. by Steffel. Baseline three, and uh, Adinger got a yep. piece of that. And then we're going to have a foul on the rebound. I think they're going to get Arvin on that one. That is her first, the team's second. 5.38 to go here in the first quarter of the varsity contest. Allie Adinger's athleticism. I mean, it looked like she was out of position, then she just came all the way back. Weisenberger picked up her dribble. She had the yeah. right idea there yeah, with Steffel going yeah. back door. But I just heard Coach Brooks say, that's all right. I mean, yeah. she's, she saw the play, but just it'll be something that'll 
Yeah, she cured needed, as the season moves yeah, on. She needed one more dribble, and, mm -hmm. and that would have been a perfect uh, backdoor cut there from Steffel. Oh, nice interior play there. And the bucket. That was Whitmire. Whitmire for two. Cuts the Panther lead down to six. There's the famous Pioneer Weave. Three-pointer from the baseline. She might have been behind the glass on that one. And there's the famous Ashland Brook three-pointer. Five for Ashland. Kripe up to Ashland. Pull up in the paint and good from 10, Brooke. Oh, man, that was not an easy shot. Ashland has seven and the lead is 15-4. Well, I don't know what Pioneer's shooting percentage is, but it's good. You're supposed I'm to be not, keeping that okay, one. Sorry. Steal by Brooke. She's got Weisenberger running the left. A little Euro look, and Brooke puts it in. Two more for the Panthers. She has nine, and it's a 17-4 game. Three-pointer by 33, Arvin. She's got five for the Cavaliers. And on the other end, Kylie Adamger gets a bucket. They will even score off a made basket. Again, just follow the rules. Yeah, that was a, now that you can't do that. You can't gamble on that. Just play your position. And Arvin uh, gets the bucket, and she's going to get a chance for an and one opportunity. Getting ready to check in number 13, Gracie Hopper, 5'7", sophomore. Checking into the game for the first time, number 32, McKenna Stricker, a 5'5", freshman. And the free throw is good. I like I like the offense we've seen from. And the pass from Stricker to Hopper. Hopper is going to get to the free throw line on the foul by Tri County. Been Whitmire, her first team's third, but you know Tri County they're they're getting ball reversals. They're getting the ball in the paint. Mm -hmm. It's just the, when they've gotten a shot, they've gotten a good shot. Yeah. Hopper puts in the first. Makes but it an even 10-point lead. It's the turnovers and it's the transition defense that... Yeah. I mean, we, bar we barely played four and a half minutes. They've scored 20 points already. Second one. Uh, Hopper got her hand in there, and Brooke gets it and puts it in for two. 11 already here in the quarter for Ashland Brooke. Shot off the glass. Steffel gets the board, gets it ahead to Brooke. Looking for Kripe. Nice what a catch. Pass. Even better catch yeah. there by Kripe. Hopper in the passing lane gets the steal. Well, <laughs> did you see that move there behind the back? And there's going to be a foul called on number 10, Bryn Warren. It's on the floor, fourth team foul on Tri-County. Brooke gets it into Steffel, looking back to Brooke. Long three-pointer, Ashland Brooke off the mark. Hopper gets a hand on that board. It's going to be out of bounds off of Hopper. It'll be Tri-County's ball. That was uh, about five feet behind the line there for Ashland. She's, she's got that in the gym type range. That one tipped away by Stricker. Steffel comes up with it. Gives it over to Brooke. Push ahead to Kripe. Kripe, nice pass inside, and Hopper is going to get another chance at the free throw line as she gets fouled that off. That was of the really nice. good defense by Stricker, and that was following her defensive rule, which is 
and Pioneer's 2-3, as we, I mean, their 2-3 is a little different because the, the two on top, they've got to sometimes step back and get in that passing lane. It's it's not a passive 2-3. Right. Hopper puts that was, in the first. That was, dare I say, Joe Walker-esque? <laughs> yeah, well, let's not go uh, there okay. yet. She's got a lot of work to do before she gets to that level. First one by Hopper is good. She's got two. Misses the second. Offensive glass, though, to Kripe. Left wing, Ashlyn Brook for three. Fourteen for Brook here in the first quarter. Still two minutes to go. Tough shot. Good block out on the weak side there by Kripe, and that's going to be a foul on Stearns. That's the sixth team foul on Tri-County. So here with two minutes to go in the first quarter, Pioneer's going to be in the bonus next foul. Sixteen point Panther lead. Brooke brings it across the timeline. Try County in a 3-2 zone. And they're going to get Hopper over the back on the weak side. Her foul, that would be her first, I believe, second team foul. Again, you'll a 3-2 zone, when the other team's playing a 3-2 zone, those baseline shots should be open, and Haley Kripe's going to make a lot of them. Oh, sorry, that was Stricker with the foul. I am not used to her wearing 32. <laughs> and jump ball, that should be Pioneer if I have my position error right. Yep. No. Yeah. Okay, I did. I had it wrong a couple times in JV, so it's not like it doesn't happen, but uh, I didn't. I, I wouldn't think this early in the game I'd have my possession arrow off. But a little hard there on the shot from Stricker. Pokes it away. She's going to get called for her second. A little frustration there, I'm sure. Steffel, Adinger, and Weisenberger check back in. The adrenaline flowing yeah. through Stricker. I thought that one was on Weisenberger, but uh, they had it marked down as her. There's another three for Brooke. That is just, <laughs> I don't know what to say. That is crazy good. Uh, there are not many girls who can shoot a 22-footer pull up off the, off the dribble. Nice Great. rebound, Adinger. I mean that's the problem when you're that opponents are gonna have dealing with <laughs> Ashlyn. I mean if you if you get up on her to shoot, she she's now looking really good and she can drive by you. I mean she's good. That's at, gonna be off of Tri County. Yeah, good defense there. Stricker got a hand on that. She's gonna take a seat. Kripe's gonna come back in for her. Well, the, the big stat: Tri County with eight turnovers and Pioneer with one. Yeah. One turnover in the first quarter of your first game of the season. It's not a bad turnover stat. Steffel Weisenberger tries to kick it back out to Brooke, but a little bit off on that pass, so we'll add yeah. double their turnovers. Yeah, there I go. <laughs> there I go again. Yeah. Fourteen seconds to go here in the first. 19-point lead for the Panthers. Adinger again defensively. 17 of the 29 here in the first quarter for when she, can, when she can come out on that wing, 
I mean, that's just an extra issue you're going to have to deal with as you try to score points against this Pioneer defense. After one, the Panthers lead 29-10. 17, is that what I said? 17 from Brooke in the quarter. We'll take a quick break and come back with second quarter action here from Pioneer High School. You're watching Pioneer Panthers basketball. All right, back here at Pioneer as we get started with the second quarter. Panthers with a 19-point lead, 17 of the 29 from junior Ashlyn Brook in her first start. Stephen Val with you here, the voice, as we uh, dubbed ourselves, of the Pioneer yeah. Panthers. I, high school sports are so amazing because the last time we saw Pioneer, it was in Gainbridge Fieldhouse and you know, the ultimate stage of Indiana high school basketball, and here we are. Now, it's once again, it's on a Saturday afternoon, and it's eight months later, and we can hear ourselves think. Yeah, yeah but they're fans here. Yeah. This is a lot better than what yeah, we were was, doing yeah. last year at the start of the season. Right. You, you can sit here, and you can't sit there. Talk about hearing yourself think. Yeah. I still, that, that Rochester game with Caston, that was just eerie. Mm-hmm. I think you were there, I was there, and Randy and Justin and, and, and the teams. Yeah. That was about it. Steffel, baseline three-pointer off the mark. Weisenberger goes after the board. They're going to say it was off of her. I think that was the right idea. Get the ball in the short corner to Weisenberger and see if she can find somebody. Start the uh, second quarter. Ashlyn Brook taking a break. You got Adinger, Weisenberger, Kripe, Stricker, and Steffel in for the Panthers. Adinger gets a piece of that one. I think that's her second block. Kripe, cross court, Adinger, and good for two. Nice pass from Kripe to Adinger. One thing you notice about Adinger is she, when she shoots, she gets rid of the ball quickly. The ball doesn't get stuck in her hands. And there's going to be a foul called on Adinger. He's going to send Warren to the line shooting two. That is her second. That's going to bring in Gracie Hopper. Bryn Warren, a 5'6 senior, puts in the first. And the second is good for Warren as well. Cuts the lead to 19. Kripe. Going to help her on the point with Ashlyn Brook getting a breather. Weisenberger is going to get fouled by Warren. That's going to be in the bonus now. That will send Weisenberger to the line for the one and one. Six forty-one here to go in the first half. Pioneer's going to be in the bonus the rest of the way. One and the bonus for Weisenberger. And off the mark, and she actually went across the line early, so that negates the attempt. Right wing, three-pointer, no good. Kripe gets the weak side rebound. Stricker can't get the bounce. Tri-County comes back the other way. Three-pointer way off the mark. Kripe again with the weak side rebound. Stricker pass, Brooke. Up in the air, can't get it to go. Weisenberger, they're on the weak side. And Foul on Arvin, I believe, before the shot. 
So she'll Another be shooting. one and one. Yeah, one and one. You don't see a lot of uh, female basketball players make that move where they don't bring the ball down. They just catch it in, in the air and, and go up with the shot. You don't see that left-handed pass that she made to Stricker. Weisenberger again over the lane early. Schombach checks in for Arvin for Tri-County. Alyssa Tolman brings it across the timeline for the Cavaliers. Brooke gets a hand on that. Weisenberger comes up, plays some good defense there in the high post. Kripe again. Boy, she has really come up with the rebounds. Pull up jumper from Stricker. A little short. Kripe, hustle play, gets it off of Tri-County. Keeps the possession for the Panthers. When your best player also plays harder than everybody else, that's... <laughs> I mean, that sets the tone. Inbounds, Brooke off the mark. Weisenberger, and they're going to say her foot was on the line. Good job there on the weak side fighting for that loose ball. But Weisenberger's heel must have touched the line there. Kennedy Korn getting ready to check into the game for the Panthers. And a foul on Weisenberger, and that will send Whitmire to the line, shooting two for the Cavaliers. They've had uh, they've had some success, you know, getting the ball into the post. Right. They they get a ball reversal against the zone, and then they they usually get a post entry. And the first free throw is good from Whitmire. Korn checks in for Weisenberger. Second Whitmire free throw off of the back iron. Hopper outlet pass is intercepted. Kripe got a hand on that shot. 15-foot baseline jumper is no good that time by Whitmire, but it's going to be out of bounds off of Hopper. These Cavaliers will have it baseline right. Oh, that was a double dribble, yep. Yeah. yeah, that was one of those things where the, she caught the ball and was at Stern. She caught the ball in the paint and was, oh, I got a shot here. Well, no, I don't. Oh, nice pass, and that was an easy bucket that time for Korn. Good pass from Kripe into the paint. All right, and that's another underrated aspect of Pioneer's offense. They can sc score points where you generate the offense from the top and also from the, the side. You know, that, that side post entry. Mm -hmm. that a, lot of, a lot of teams aren't good at that. But Pioneer is. Kripe, baseline three, good, Haley Kripe. You just add that element. There's a tip by Stricker, good uh, job on the defense. You add that element when Haley Kripe gets going. I mean, you got Kripe, you got Brooke, both shooting from last year 40-plus percent from three-point line. Mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as an opposing coach, I mean – how do you how do you even start thinking about playing defense against this team? So many so many weapons just spread mm -hmm. you out and shot off the mark. Stricker comes away with the loose ball, kicks it up to Brooke baseline three. Kripe off the mark. That is her patented shot. That baseline shot and. And Coach Tyler just crossing her fingers on that one that she missed. Brooke gets a rebound, and she's going to be fouled by Warren, and that will tend uh, Ashlyn Brooke to the line, shooting one and one. <laughs> I 
Adinger thought she was going to get a chance to go in and brook. I don't know what changed his mind, but he, she has two fouls. And oh, she has two fouls. Okay. Stern decided against him. Stern's in, and uh, Ashlyn Brook, her first attempt from the free throw line. Ashlyn is 0 for 1 from the line. Oh, sorry, her second attempt. That's right, she had that and one, didn't she? Mm -hmm. And makes them both. 25 point lead here with 345 to go in the second quarter. The opening game of the season. There is a three by Zarsi. Is that how you say that? Zarsi? Yep. All right. Brooke, what a look inside. Weisenberger for two. What a pass from uh, Ashlyn Brooke. Baseline three is long for Whitmire. Quickly ahead to Brooke. Not sure what she did there. She went to the left hand for some reason. Kind of, I think she her got, steps were off. Yeah. Nice pass. Good cut. Kripe for two more. That was a set play. Get the, get the front, get the all the attention on the front player, and then have Haley Kripe cut in from the foul line and a little slice cut, and she was wide open. Kripe into double figures with 11. There is a nice job getting into the paint, Arvin. Arvin for two. She's got 10. Pull up, elbow, good for her, Brooke. Not many, again, not many girls have that pull-up jump shot in their arsenal. Poked away by Brooke. Tri-County retains possession. Good rotation and uh, the shot that time by Arvin off the mark. Kripe comes away with the rebound on the weak side. Brooke, long three from Brooke. I'm running out of room, and it's still the first half foul. Her, uh, her stat sheet is almost full. And she's diving on the floor going after a loose ball, and it's going to be Tri-County on the jump. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Brooke is – don't – Hustle, but maybe not that much. <laughs> Three-pointer off the mark. Kripe, another rebound. She's probably pretty close to a double-double already. Have her, I have her with eight rebounds. Yeah. I'm 11 points, eight rebounds here in the first half. Minute to go here in the second quarter, and that's going to be knocked out. They're going to say it was last touch by Brooke. Yeah, that was really good defense by Arvin there. They weren't just going to let Pioneer get to the pass the ball to the wing. They were going to deny that, and they did. Arvin did a really nice job there, anticipating. Shot off the mark, offensive glass that time by Stearns. Stearns didn't realize how open she was. Brooke, quick hands. Yeah, she's got Kripe and running, falling backwards, throws a half court pass to Kripe for the bucket. I mean, she threw a bullet and she was falling backwards. Kripe with the block. Oh, they're gonna call her with the body. 
It's going to send Whitmire to the line, but that was a uh, big-time block there by Kripe. Just got her with the lower body a little bit. Whitmire off on the first. Hopper checks back into the game. Kennedy Korn going to get a break. Second one is good for Whitmire. Three-pointer, good. She knew that was going in the minute she released it. Five three-pointers here in the first half for Ashlyn Brook. She's got 27 points. Not a bad first half. Yep. As you said, um, she might be able to get another start out of this. <laughs> At the half, Pioneer leads Tri-County 52 to 19. We'll come back. Val is furiously trying to total up the stats. We'll take a break and come back with more here from Pioneer High School. You're watching Pioneer Panthers basketball on RTC TV4. You know that Maggie Ball graduated, so they might not have a whole lot of size. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting, too. You know, the, the girls that played volleyball, they will be going back to where their season ended. Mm -hmm. Adinger drive to the paint. Weisenberger offensive glass. And then another rebound. There's nine for Kripe. Oh, I'm going to quit trying to keep the score. You're doing it really well there, and my stat sheet's getting full. There's a steal by Brooke. Oh, uh, Brooke was looking for Weisenberger, I think. I think, I don't know, was Weisenberger expecting Brooke to shoot it? Drive to the paint, and Weisenberger jump ball. It'll stay Tri-County on the jump. Jump ball, Tri-County. Again, the clock is not stopping because it's a 35-point lead. The clock will continue to roll. Three-pointer off the mark. Adinger gets the glass, kicks it up to Brooke. Oh, oh backdoor cut. <laughs> nice defense by Stuffel. And a foul called. It's going to be on Arvin, I think. Nope, they're going to get uh, Schombach. Be her first team's first. Nice ball fake. Can't get the roll. Weisenberger almost got the offensive glass. Just went off of her fingertips. Coming back of the way is Zarcy. And yeah, Mandy Weisenberger is a little raw, but she's going to be pretty effective in time. Yeah, she's just a junior, so she's mm -hmm. got a lot of a lot of uh, time to uh, really come in and, and work on her game. The the strength part of the can she hold her own in the post and not get knocked around? Yeah, that's that's not a worry at all. Right. Kripe right, going to reset it. Tri County and a man. Played zone most of the first half. Just inside the three for Brooke off the mark. Rebound to Schombach. Nice entry pass, and the bucket is good for Whitmire. Quickly the other way, Kripe. Wide open on the top of the key, off the mark for Brooke. 
Tricon, he's got to fight through screens better than that. If they're gonna, if they're, if they're, if they're gonna play man. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to go under a screen yeah. when you're uh, guarding Ashland Brook. Mm -hmm. Three pointer right wing off the mark. Good hustle there on the weak side and getting the rebound is Stearns. And Kripe reaches up and grabs it. And Kripe double teamed and uh, Coach Brooks going to call a timeout. timeout 30, second timeout. 30 second timeout. We'll keep it here. Panthers lead Tri-County 56-21 in the season opener here for the Pioneer Panthers. And as you mentioned at the half, they're going to be at Southwood on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. and then they're they're not going to play again until the 19th of November. Right, so 10 more days of practice. Yeah. You know, the, the schedule is inherently built light at the beginning of the season for Pioneer due to the fact that they're usually still playing volleyball yeah. uh, late into the start of the girls' basketball season. And, you know, like we mentioned last year today, they were playing for a state championship in volleyball. So they definitely were not, uh, you know, even thinking about basketball yet. And you could pioneer schedule. They get the Twin Lakes invite. They're playing in that tournament. Starting off with Mount Vernon of Fortville. Could wind up having to play Clinton Prairie in the second round. They get by. That's if they get by Mount Vernon. Yeah. We know Clinton Prairie fifty-one to twelve the other night. Won their first season opener. We saw them last year. Tinley Neal, outstanding player, new coach. Yeah. And a coach that Coach Brook knows very well. Sure. Jeff Henley took over for Amy Anthrop. Won a state championship with the Rossville boys back in 2002. And there is the 10th rebound for Kripe, and she puts it back offensive glass. And she's got a double-double here in her first game of her senior year. There's a uh, bad pass, and Brooke corrals it. Left-hand layup. And everybody's uh, heart goes uh, a little bit into their throats there when she goes down on that one. She gets back up. Ashlyn's tough. She's a golfer. <laughs> one shot. Bucket was good. So we've got Hopper and Corn and Stricker going to check in. I'm sure uh, Ashlyn's afternoon will probably be coming to a close here shortly. Puts in the and one. 40-point lead here for the Panthers. And 30 points for Ashlyn Brook. So we mentioned the you know, the light load on the first part of the season. That fourth game for Pioneer when they play uh, Culver on the 20th is their fourth game of the season. It is uh, Culver's eighth game of the season. Yeah. Culver with a someone play from like eight or nine games before Thanksgiving. Kripe off of the assist from Ashland Brook. And we got a timeout by the Cavaliers. It is a full timeout, so we'll take a break with them and be back here with more. You're watching Pioneer Panthers basketball on RTC TV4. I'm back here at Pioneer High School with the uh, Panthers leading 63-30, to 30, said uh, Ashland Brook with 30. We haven't even really mentioned it. Uh, Haley Kripe, 23 points and 10 rebounds, so she has a double-double. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank Aiden, our uh, cameraman today. He uh, is one of our Pioneer class, uh, TV radio class members. And, you know, they, they've, they've done some great things. Uh, I, I've sent Madison and, and George and Aiden and, and the crew, you know, they, they went over to Southwood. They did the, the volleyball sectionals. Mm -hmm. uh, they did uh, some, some really tough regional games in the rain or sectional football sectional games in the rain here over the last few weeks. And, Kind of nice last night, a little cold, but at least it wasn't raining. <laughs> I mean, the, the game wasn't very good, but at least it wasn't raining. Three-pointer off the mark. Stricker comes away with it. Gets it over to Brooke. And doesn't go. And the Cavaliers come away with it. Arvin brings it across. 
Three-pointer on the baseline is good for Talman. Tal Talman? Is that how you say that? And again, Pioneer scores in transition, even after a made basket. Was that Kreit with 25 now? She's got 25. Nice pass inside the assist from Stricker to Hopper. Good push up there by Brooke. Quarter over, Brooke, right wing, off the back iron. Deflection there by Brooke. And that's going to be a foul on Pioneer. Foul on Stricker. Brooke gets a break. Corn is out. Kripe is out as well. Clock running with 55 to go here in the third quarter. And Adinger nice gets a piece Adinger. of that. And that time she's going to get called for the foul. First one is off, so it does stop for free throws? Yes, it does okay. stop for free throws, but not on the, uh, what do they call it, the common foul. Okay. But yeah. And it will stop after the third quarter. Off on both. Adinger gets the rebound. Give a shout-out to my middle daughter, Macy, who's watching, supposed to be at work, but watching the game. <laughs> In and out. I think once Stricker makes one, she'll make about three or four. She got her feet set there. Yeah. Didn't, and, didn't and rush it. It, yeah. was, it was more of a more of a rhythm shot there. See if they can run end of quarter play here without Brooke or Kripe on the floor. It's a lot of times girls don't know how much time is left and they don't get the offense started until late. And yep. <laughs> yeah, when we've seen. When yeah. you don't have your floor leaders out there. It, So after three here at Pioneer High School, the Panthers lead 67-24. We'll take a break. Come back, fourth quarter action here on RTC TV. After three here at Pioneer High School, the Panthers lead Tri-County 67-24. And good uh, opening morning game, I guess you'd say, for the Panthers. They've uh, been pretty good on in all aspects of the game defense offense rebounds everything's been rolling pretty well for them yeah and, and um they've been able to follow the rules and they've been able to you know the that we talk about with coach brook the rules capital t the capital r rules mm -hmm. and most of the mistakes and again the uh, Mistakes is small m <laughs> have been due to inexperience and and just we we mentioned Stearns gets down low for a bucket and a foul foul on Weisenberger she's going to get an and one attempt here two 
Off the back iron. Rebound to Adinger. Adinger loses it. And a couple offensive rebounds there, and Pioneer finally comes away with it. Weisenberger. Another thing that, that's part of the rules is, especially with the post and the just the bigs, is being able to size up your defender. Steffel drives to the paint, left-hander no good. And it's going to be out of bounds off of Pioneer. I like the aggressive Steffel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to put uh, Kripe in for uh, Weisenberger, a little post move there. And Brooke is going to come back in for Steffel. Clock running under seven to go. Right, and this is where the, the number situation is, you know, when you don't have Baker and Bro uh, Borges right. and uh, uh, Blickenstaff. And yeah, it's going to be out off of Kripe. Knocks it out. I think if you had those three healthy, that they would be in the game and not Kripe and Brook. Right. And a girl wants to tie her shoe, and so the clock continues to run. I mean, this is just... Yeah. Arg. And the offensive glass, that's going to be a foul on Adinger, and Whitmer puts it in for two. Zarcy must be checking in for Whitmer. They didn't let her in on the one shot, and she will come in. 67-29. Clock stopped, 5.58 to go here in the ballgame. Cry pull up, 10 footer, no good. Nice weave offense. He'll take that shot every time. And that one is knocked away by Hopper. Who said Pioneer doesn't play soccer? <laughs> Stricker's going to get called for the foul. So she she is playing kind of like her sister in her freshman year. Got four fouls. And the three-pointer good for Warren. Brook, off the mark. Adinger, loose ball, and Tri-County comes away with it. And Arvin puts it in for two. Well, now we're back under the clock, right? Ten to nothing, Tri-County this quarter. My math is right. Beautiful play by Brook. Now we're not. Yeah, I can see this is uh Yeah, a mess. Yeah. Now we are. Kripe goes down. Nice finish by Haley. Because she had to dribble with her left hand. And that's her twelfth rebound. Coach Brooke wants a timeout here. He's going to uh, get some subs in. And we're going to see a lot of that in this 35 point rule. Because if you got to stop, the, if you want to get subs in, how are you going to get subs in? Right. Unless you call a timeout. Full timeout. There's going to be a lot of pointless timeouts. Yeah. We'll take a quick break here with a uh, 60 second timeout. Be back in a moment. And 4.02 left to go here mm -hmm. in the fourth. I don't have that steel trap memory like you do, Val. Huh? No. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> so Steffel, Stricker, Adinger, 
Weisenberger and Korn out for Pioneer. Nice pass there to Weisenberger. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be out off of Tri-County. Yeah. Again, sometimes you, you want to execute the play the way Coach drew it up sometimes that it doesn't. Sometimes you need to take a pause. I think Steffel threw the pass too quickly. Mm. Nice defense by Zarcy. Yeah, you can tell the game's kind of quick right now for McKenna. It'll slow down. And Adinger's going to change pivot shoulder blades. He called for the travel. That's Pioneer's first turnover this half. Only, what, five of the game? Six? Yeah. I think they only had four, I thought you said, at half. Fifteen turnovers to five. 15 is not even a real terrible number for Tri-County. Yeah, the three on the weak side from Tallman. Good idea by Stricker. Yeah, she, yeah, she went along the right baseline and... She got too far under the bucket. Should have came up on the other side. But she's going to get some free throws here, see if she can uh, drop one of those in. Well, the foul was on Arvin. They called it on Tallman. Yeah. First one good for Stricker, her first varsity point. And two for two. Leading the team in free throw percentage, too. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, uh, Ashlyn Brook. <laughs> clock is uh, supposed to be running all the time. Now it has been stopped for the last play. Adinger takes it to the bucket. Good drive there by Kylie Adinger. You know, you talk to Coach Brooke, and, and from what I've been seeing, you know, Kylie Adinger, oh, five-second call. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I've seen, you know, with Kylie Adinger, it's uh, pretty impressive. I think, you know, she's she's got a really uh, bright future. Mm -hmm. Just a sophomore here, so... You know, she's, she's got some size. I don't know what they have her listed at. I thought she was about 5'10". 5'8", but got a l pretty long arms, it seems like. Yeah. And the bucket is good. Stricker. Wow. Stricker, Wow. I'm kind of wondering if the, she hasn't had that move done against her in practice. <laughs> Maybe by, a uh, number, By number 15. Yeah. Maybe she'll learn something. Yeah, a three-pointer there Star! from Zarcy. I didn't even <laughs> I didn't realize that was her. I'm just not used to that 32. It's just a number she's never wore. Weak side rebound. I think we're gonna get Steffel on the back side there with the foul. Arvin shooting two here for the Cavaliers. Puts the first one in. So now are we stopping the clock again? When they shoot free throws. I know, but it's is it under again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a foul on Whitmire, I believe. No. Arvin. Arvin, I think. yeah. It's only the fourth team foul. 
Tri-County in that sectional with Caston and North White. The sectional will be at North White. North White hosting that one this yep. year? Okay. Yep. Very curious to see what the Lady Vikings look like. Oh, nice finish by Stricker. She's got six this quarter. And that's going to do it. The Pioneer Panthers win their opener 77-42 over the Tri-County Cavaliers. And a great uh, way to open the season up for the Panthers. And I know they have a uh, meeting coming up after the uh, thing, but I already talked to Coach Brooke, and he said he'd give us a minute. He, he said he's going to put you on the clock, Val. You've seen some girls with court vision, but not quite like Ashland's. And you've seen some good shooters, but not quite as good as Ashland. And then you combine all of that into one player, and you've got a pretty special player. Mm -hmm. So it, it all just kind of added up. But it all just seemed to be within the flow of the game, too. So uh, they, they just looked pretty sharp throughout the whole match, and throughout the whole game. And then getting out to a big lead, I think, took some, took some of the nerves off. We're joined by Coach Jeff Brook. Hey, you guys. How you doing? Appreciate hey, you coming today. Great to be here. Uh, nice uh, nice way to start the season off. Uh, how how good uh, of a feeling was it to see Ashland, you know, ready to go and, and to play like she did coming out, you know, the first game of the season? Yeah, it, it was good to, to get those nerves, you know, you know out. Uh, in, any Just for all the girls, not, not just Ashland. But, yeah, it was good to see her come out and, you know, do things that Ashland uh, has uh, has wanted to do the last couple of years. But boy, what a, what a team effort tonight! When you go through and you look at, uh, you know, those eight players on the floor. I haven't looked at assists, but more, I, I don't think there was many buckets that didn't have an assist uh, mm -hmm. attached to it. So that's great to see in that teamwork. I think we, we talk about the kind of the rules, the way Pioneer girls basketball plays, and what you want Lady Panther basketball. It seemed like you followed the rules tonight, from the transition. When, from the time you would get the rebound or the defensive stop to getting the ball on the other end, did you follow the rules the way you wanted? <laughs> yeah, it we, sure seemed like you did. Yeah, we did. We, we followed the rules tonight, and the mm -hmm. girls did a nice job. You know, when you have somebody like, uh, you know, Haley Kripe that, uh, I mean, a lot of those first first half buckets came off Haley Kripe on that weak side board, and, you mm -hmm. know, she, she's got the ability to rebound and then turn and go. Um, and when that happens, you know, that just opens the floor up. I thought Kylie Adinger did a nice job of running running the floor tonight, being that rim runner for us. I thought Mandy Weisenberger did a nice job when they did they did get a bucket getting it out to Ashland yeah. and we were able to push the ball up the floor and um, you know when you when you see um, uh, Ashland and Haley work together you know I think there were several times Ashland's throwing it from three quarters court to Haley at the other quarter court so that, that's great to see so yeah we followed the rules tonight definitely. Uh, rebounding I think we've talked a lot about that how would you assess your rebounding I had Haley with 12 boards well, I, I knew mm -hmm. I looked at one time and said she's got to have a double double because mm -hmm. um, it just seemed like every board that that, that was got needed to be gotten she she got so you know um she she's a force to be reckoned with especially when we played that you know that that uh, two three zone when she's on that weak side block she does such a nice job yeah. using her body getting wide i mean she's only five six five seven and, and does a nice job rebounding coach you uh sorry val um, right you gotta you gotta feel really good about the depth that you have on your bench because you were still you were missing obviously mm -hmm. macy baker and then you're still without brooklyn borges mm -hmm. And you're still able to go pretty pretty deep into that bench and, and have uh, some pretty good contributions. Uh, you know, even with the success that you guys have had in the past couple of seasons, you, you haven't had that uh, luxury as much. So it's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, we, we look at our, our bench tonight. Gracie Hopper did a nice job. Um, McKenna Stricker did a nice job coming in. You know, I don't I don't think she thought she was going to get that many touches tonight. You know, especially I ran her at the one tonight. She hadn't worked on that in the last week. Um, did it did a nice job coming in, and then you know Kennedy Corn got some uh, nice minutes. You know, we, we look at that depth. We, we, we want to make sure that our girls are fresh, and especially with the type of play that we play. Um, and, and when you have that depth, you can do that. What do you sense um, in terms of uh, Kylie Attinger's role on this team? It seemed like in that 2-3, she can come out on the wing and mm -hmm. kind of bother that wing shooter mm -hmm. or, the, or the, that wing player from mm -hmm. the opposing team uh, as a defender. Uh, what were your thoughts on, on Kylie's performance, and how much do you think she – 
she can improve just as she gets yeah, more yeah. experience. Yeah, so, so she's an athletic um, young mm-hmm. young lady. She's got a really long reach. I mean, you saw that, that yeah. tonight on us. Kind yeah, of reminds she, me of she a, doesn't seem five eight. Mm-hmm. She seems taller. Yeah, she does. She does a nice job. You know, the the things that that we want her to do is obviously rebound and be able to knock down that ten to ten to you know eight foot shot. Thank you, um, eight foot shot there when we get dribble penetration. Uh, that's what we would like to see out of her, and I think as we develop her and as she learns and understands and gets more experience, um, you know, that weak side board, sometimes she watches instead of making physical contact with that player and then going to get the boards. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, she, she's going to learn uh, mm-hmm. as she goes through and excited to have her as part of Panther basketball, definitely. Big game coming up. You guys will be on the road, your mm-hmm. first road game of the year over at Southwood on Tuesday. and. You know, the, the volleyball girls will mm-hmm. probably have some uh, mixed emotions <laughs> with that as it was the where their season came to an end. But, you know, it's a pretty good Southwood team. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on as you move forward? You know, you know, Chad does a nice job over there, and those girls play hard. So, you know, we're going to go over and we're going to uh, probably face a pretty good, um, you know, man-to-man defense. Mm-hmm. Um at least that's what they did a couple years ago. We didn't play them last year. Some COVID yeah. and, and some scheduling and the ho- the, uh, ho- the Hopper girl is an excellent player. Yes, uh, yes, she is. Yeah, and I'll be curious to see how they maybe match up defensively with okay. your team. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know we're excited to go over and, and and play against them. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're we're ready to go. And um, but yeah, I, I know they're going to bring it. Um, obviously. Um, the, that defense, that man-to-man defense, we've got to make sure that we're, we're ready to go for a, a, a good man-to-man defense as, as we go over. But, um, you know, anytime you play on a Tuesday night and it's your first Tuesday night, it, you know, <laughs> sometimes the rust needs to be shaken off, right? It's different when you're playing in your gym. Um, as I, you know, Tri-County, I think they I, – I don't know what they shot that that first quarter, but it, it – it didn't have. It wasn't good, but they mm-hmm. did have some open shots. And you know, anytime yeah. you go to a, a visiting a visiting gym, it takes mm-hmm. you a little bit to get used to it. Yeah. Well, was Tri County able to get a ball reversal against your zone, and then able to get dump the ball on the post? It seemed like they tried. That was kind of what their modus operandi was defensively or offensively against yeah, your yeah. zone. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh-huh. I think what you saw is is with just some inexperience in our post players, mm-hmm. not not being able to read it. You know, when it mm-hmm. went to the wing or uh, went to mm-hmm. the deep deep corner. Yeah. You know, that rotation in, in mm-hmm. my my bottom other two. So that's something we'll get to the drawing board on Monday, and then you know see what happens on Tuesday, and then uh, I think we have nine days off um, there before our next game, which would be uh, I think it's Knox, mm-hmm. uh, that conference one. Um, so we'll uh, we'll make sure we try to try to take care of that over <laughs> the next couple of weeks, definitely. All right, Coach, I know you guys have a, a yep. parent meeting. Yep, and, I do. And I yep. hope you'll forgive me. I probably will miss that one. But That's okay. I, I, I think Carrie will be there for that. So thanks for coming up. Great first win. We'll see you at uh, Southwood on Tuesday. Hey, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate thanks, coach. it. All right. Thanks, Coach Brooke, for uh, coming up and uh, taking a few minutes. I know he's got a, uh, a busy schedule the rest of the day. So uh, got some final thoughts and stats and stuff for us, Val? Okay. Scoring for... Uh, let's see here for uh, Tri County. Um, Wintmeyer had nine. Arvin had fourteen. Zarcy had six. Warren had five. Tallman had six. Stearns had two. Does that add up to 42? Sure. We'll, okay. we'll call it 42. Okay. For Pioneer, Pioneer, I'm very solid on this one. Brooke had 32. Kreif had 27. She also had 12 rebounds. Stricker had six. Adinger had six. Weisenberger had four. Korn had two. And Hopper had two. Nice balance there. And obviously, you're going to expect that from, from Brooke and, and uh, Kreif. Yeah. And yeah. But yeah, I don't. Do you want. But <laughs> uh, balance is not going to be. Very important for Pioneer. No. It might be for some teams, but it's. I remember that Northfield team last year. It just seemed like we saw Northfield about six times, and they had a different leading score in all six mm-hmm. games. That, but that's that was that, that was the way they played. Yeah. That's not going to happen for Pioneer. It doesn't yeah. have to happen. They'll right. be fine. Right. You know, it's it's one of those things that everybody is going to have a role, and and as long as they know their role and they stick to their role, but also you just you can't pass up open opportunities. If if you do have an open opportunity, you obviously got to be willing to to take it and. You know, right. we, we saw that. Keep your head if if you are playing with Ashlyn Brook, keep your head up. Sure. Because you just might get one right in your lap, and yeah. be ready for it because she's looking for you. So yeah. you, you need to be looking for her. Yeah. And just keep running. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, you know, it it was funny because as uh, McKenna was watching a couple of different games over the, the last week, you know, and 
they're walking up the floor. We're not allowed to do that. You yeah. Know, why are they walking up the floor? We got to run up the floor. So, right, and that's a very good sign because so often that first game of the year, especially mm. if it's on like a Saturday. Saturday right, it was a weird morning, Saturday time. afternoon. Yeah, eleven o'clock, twelve thirty, and then, yeah. like like I said, the ball's flying all over the gym. It's in the stands. It's yeah. Yeah. turnovers. There's traveling every every so often, and yeah, uh, boy, Pioneer looked pretty sharp, especially you know given. You know that they were unveiling a lot of new players, and yeah. even some of the old players were in different roles. Yeah. Well, look at the. You know, they've had two weeks to practice. They've never had that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's been you know kind of rough with volleyball. So, I gotta I gotta give a shout out to my mom. Wave everybody hi. There's my mom back here in the background, just sitting there. And mm -hmm. uh, my oldest Maddie and and my grandson Rowan were watching. I, I got yelled at because I didn't give them a shout out, and I gave Macy a shout out. So, and and look at that. You know, just everything there she's she's doing the laundry and, and handling things i mean you know multi-purpose uh player there ashlyn coming in with the with the laundry and ashlyn separate the whites and the colors for when you do the laundry <laughs> yeah there. just giving ashlyn some advice right doesn't help when i turn the camera off all right we better just call it good here <laughs> I'm starting to hit buttons that I shouldn't hit, and things are going to go bad. So, yeah. any other thoughts? Pioneer, look, yeah, this is where Pioneer needs to be yep. this time of year. Panthers win their opener 77 42 over the Tri County Cavaliers. We're glad you could join us. Uh, Val and I will be back here in a little bit. I don't even know what time it is, Val. It's about two, so uh, not too long. We'll be heading up to Caston and uh, be there for the uh, cast and comments hosting the Rochester Zebras. That should be a fun one as well. And you know, we saw that one last year. That was kind of the coming out party for the cast and comments, uh, coming back and, and winning that one at Rochester. That was kind of a, ooh, casting's here. Yeah. So we'll be up there for, for that. And I think Rochester remembers that one too. Yeah, I'm sure they do, and, and they probably uh, want to uh, spoil Caston's home opener much the way Caston spoiled theirs last year. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you after a bit. Thanks for tuning in to RTC TV4's coverage. Of